In 1927, James Grover Thurber was at a crossroads. He'd been a newspaper reporter in Columbus, Ohio, and for the French Riviera edition of the New York Herald Tribune and in New York City for the Post, and he wasn't all that good at it. Worse yet, it didn't satisfy him. But he'd just gotten a job as a feature writer and reporter and sometimes editor at a struggling magazine called The New Yorker. And even as he still contemplated quitting the big city and going home to Ohio, an ember caught fire. The magazine published a short story he had written, one he had written in just 45 minutes, in fact. It was the start of his fiction career, which lasted 34 years until his death in 1961. I'm getting slightly ahead of myself because we have time for two stories tonight. Both are contained in, and I'm reading from the Library of America, Thurber Writings and Drawings, edited by Garrison Keeler. This first story is from Fables for Our Time and Famous Poems Illustrated from 1940. The Hen and the Heavens by James Thurber. Once upon a time, a little red hen was picking up stones and worms and seeds in a barnyard when something fell on her head. The heavens are falling down, she shouted, and she began to run, still shouting. The heavens are falling down. All the hens that she met and all the roosters and turkeys and ducks laughed at her smugly, the way you laugh at one who is terrified when you aren't. What did you say? They chortled. The heavens are falling down, cried the little red hen. Finally, a very pompous rooster said to her, don't be silly, my dear. It was only a pea that fell on your head. And he laughed and laughed, and everybody else except the little red hen laughed. Then suddenly, with an awful roar, great chunks of crystallized cloud and huge blocks of icy blue sky began to drop on everybody from above, and everybody was killed, the laughing rooster and the little red hen and everybody else in the barnyard, for the heavens actually were falling down. Moral? It wouldn't surprise me a bit if they did. The Hen and the Heavens by James Thurber. Now the short story which I mentioned. He wrote, inspired by the craze of 1926 and 1927, people swimming the English Channel and becoming instantly famous for it. Seems to me that dovetails perfectly with the trial coverage of the past week and the reality that just because it draws a crowd does not mean it's important and it doesn't mean that it means what they tell you it means. An American Romance by James Thurber. The little man in an overcoat that fitted him badly at the shoulders had had a distressing scene with his wife. He had left home with a look of serious determination and had now been going around and around in the central revolving door of a prominent department store's main entrance for 15 minutes. The knot of annoyed shoppers had been augmented to a sizable crowd by the time a floor walker arrived and rapped sharply on the glass panels as they flashed by. Here, he called. Here, stop this. But the little man kept going around and around. Use the other doors, called an assistant department superintendent who came up. There are plenty of other doors. He was unheeded, and the crowd continued to gather about the relentlessly whirling door. The store carpenter was sent for, and he tried vainly to slip a wedge under the door and arrest its progress. A policeman attempted to hurl himself into the door and was badly bruised. It's not a case for the police, said one onlooker. For shame. This man is a patient, not a criminal. It's a case for a psychoanalyst. A psychoanalyst was called. How old are you? He demanded. The little man did not answer, nor did he answer when the specialist asked him where his boyhood had been spent, and if he had ever been in a cyclone, and if he had ever had a severe shock while out walking. Soon the newspapers heard about it, and the crowd was pushed aside to make room for the photographers, the little man had now been going around for two hours. At this point, a richly dressed gentleman in a great coat shouldered through the crowd and spoke loudly. I'll give him $45,000 if he can go for another two hours, he said. I'm a big chewing gum magnet from the West. Bets of 10 to 1 were immediately placed that the little man couldn't do it. He was such a little man. At five minutes of eight, just before the additional two hours ended, firemen were helping hold back the crowd. Flares were lighted. As the store clock sounded eight, the little man fell out of the doors exhausted. Willing hands supported him to a nearby hotel where the management had thrown open the presidential suite. By midnight, the little man had received more than $100,000 worth of offers from the vaudeville and moving picture companies. I did it for the wife and children, he said. An American Romance by James Thurber from the New Yorker, March 5th, 1927.
That's Countdown. Up next on Vanguard, America's secret war with Iran. I'm Keith Olbermann. Good night and good luck.